One of the things I haven't been able to show Rush is how good our inshore fishery can be. Hey Rush, I got a bird pile up ahead. I'm a lot of times you'll hear us talking about inshore fishing, offshore fishing. There they are, right outside the boat, Rush. Show Rush what we call the three Bs. Looks like the right stuff. Oh no, they went the other way. That place was going off. I mean, everywhere I look, I was in awe. There's sick. Mistake. No, they're rolling right off the side. That looked like a yellow. Right here off the side of the boat. My name is Ali Hussaini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate the largest sport fishing website in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Malt. I got you, what you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. When I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tunas. Our passion is our profession. And we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. <laughs> we explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. We've been running the Yellowtail Shootout now for 11 years. It's a very popular tournament. We get anywhere from 60 to 80 boats, and these guys are fired up for it every year. We put on a great party. We give an awesome swag bag. We've got unbelievable raffles from our great sponsors. And these guys, we see the same dudes every year, year in, year out, ready to compete and catch our bread and butter big game fish. 169081. Our tournament has been kind of fine tuned over the years. Great prize attached, there's some money that goes with it, and there's also a biggest fish jackpot. The team that weighed in a bag of 40.7 pounds, it's husbands, it's wives, guys bring their dad, they bring their kids, we sell extra meal tickets. I mean, you can bring the whole family. You're gonna win a raffle, most likely. You're gonna get a ton of awesome swag, and we make sure everybody has an awesome meal and some really good, cold San Diego craft beer to drink. Like any fishing day out of Southern California, first stop's always the bait dock. For me, on any given day, bait could take upwards of two hours sometimes to catch. One thing about California, that whole equation is gone. You pull up to the bait barge, you tell them how many scoops you want, and you're on your way fishing. One of the things I haven't been able to show Rush is how good our inshore fishery can be. The Coronado Islands have gotten a nice current of warm blue water that blew across it. And we're gonna do something a little different today. And honestly, this is something I've never done. When I think of chum buckets, I'm shark fishing, usually. Right. So I got us a couple chum buckets. We're gonna go to the Coronado Islands. There's kelp on the south end of South Island. There's a ridge of kelp. We're gonna fish that, and we're gonna put the chum buckets out. And I'm interested to see if we can use your program of the chum bag, live baits to chum with over here, and what'll happen. What are you trying to draw in? So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna set up uphill of the kelp. We're gonna feed that chum in there, live bait and the, and the cut up stuff. And hopefully we're gonna pull calico bass out. We're gonna attract some barracuda, some bonita, yellowtail, maybe a white sea bass, could be a halibut. I mean, we could catch really anything new in this. I'm pretty excited to try it and see if your method works here. I'm confident it will. A lot of times you'll hear us talking about inshore fishing, offshore fishing. Well, over there on the West Coast, at least to me, inshore fishing is fishing around the islands. For me, it's, a, it's really cool scenery. And you could be in anywhere from 40 feet to 1,000 feet and have this mountainous backdrop right behind you. Rush is basically the mate that day because I'm driving the boat. I'm telling him what we need. We're gonna need a surface bait rig. We're gonna need a deep bait rig, dropper loop style. We're gonna need to have our yo-yo irons ready to go and our surface iron. And depending what I see, I'm gonna tell him to grab. Rush doesn't cast the surface iron as well as I do, so I kind of made that my job for the day. Hey Rush, I got a bird pile up ahead. I'm gonna slide into it. And when I say throw some bait and then slide a bait back. 40 pound. Yeah, 40's fine. Just trying to see if this is fish or just bait. No, they're rolling right off the sides. That look like a yellow. Right here off the side of the boat. Throw a bunch of bait. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Penn, let the battle begin. Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. 
bdoutdoors.com and Evan Rood. The Slammer 3 uses a fully machined brass gear system. And what that gives you is extreme durability and extreme cranking power. Dura Drag Material is the smoothest, most durable drag material we've ever used. Yeah, that's him. The seals on the drag system around the main shaft and pinion gear and the body. The Slammer 3 is sealed to our highest standard yet. The future of boating is here. Now get all the efficient performance of an Evinrude E-Tech G2 in the new 150, 175, and 200 horsepower. Fuel economy is everything. I was really shocked how fuel efficient it is. Anywhere from 40 to 50 miles further on a tank of fuel. All day on the water. I told my wife, I said, you know, I can't think of the last time I filled up. It's more money in the bank for me. The best in class fuel economy of the Evinrude E-Tech G2 is now available from 150 to 300 horsepower. To learn more, visit Evinrude.com. We're just getting started. We lost a day getting ready to go. A lot of times the best indicator to find fish, especially when you're not really fishing near structure, is bird life. I'm gonna go to the bow, throw the surf center. There they are, right outside the boat, Rush. They're eating little tiny chovy. I'm it. Looks like it's that bonita I was telling you about. I'm bit. Nice. Actually. Might be yellowtail. Oh, hello. Whoa. Whoa. Excuse me. Excuse me. Stay with us. I got this drag on. Triple exterminator. That was awesome. Any surface action like that's awesome, you know? Roll up, they're just blowing up. What are they, yellowtail? This is Bonita. Bonita, huh? Feel a little tuna in yours? This is pretty much what I was hoping for right here. Awesome. I love when a plan comes together. Surface grab bag, you know? This is our springtime deal here. Catching these guys in the flats. Right. And it really hasn't happened this year. As good as the offshore fishing's been, the water in here has been totally hit or miss. This is a good fish right here. Oh, there's some legit 30s running around in here. This is a guy, I mean, I don't know if he's 30, but he's definitely a good 20. Remember, let him go and got him. God. Nice. Dude, that's what I call a good breakfast. Dude, we slide in, fishing. roll up. There they are, waiting for us. This is standard grain. He's about 14 pounds, 13 pounds. As bread and butter, San Diego. I mean, how many of these you see on shirts and hats and stickers, Everywhere. right? Everybody Everywhere. loves yellowtails. One of the things that I really hope to accomplish on this trip was to show Rush what we call the three Bs. Bass, Barracuda and Bonita. And then when you're fishing the three Bs, you always have the chance of the local trophy, which is a yellowtail. Pretty much inshore fishing over there, you can go out targeting all these different fish. It's kind of our grab bag fishing over here, but on the West Coast. Throw some of that bay rush. I see the birds picking and it looks like there's something with them, but I can't say for sure. A meter and like loose fish all through here, but not like a wad. Targeting barracuda is a lot like targeting yellowtail. I'm looking for surface activity, surface activity near a piece of structure. When they get in these big balls, they generally will chase the bait to the surface, not unlike a yellowtail, and the birds are always gonna be that best indicator. You're gonna run in on them just like you would a school of yellowtail. You kind of slide off to the side, set yourself up upwind so you can cast your iron as far as possible, and you also wanna kind of get out in front of them whichever direction they're traveling. And if you do all that right, they're pretty eager to bite a lure. I'm yep. tight. Oh, came off. Bit again, this is a bonita for sure. Maybe it's a mac. Looks like a mackerel. No, 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 here's oh, a variety no. bag. 
Barracuda. No, they have teeth like ours. They don't have, I mean, it's a mini version of yours. What they do have that yours has is that awesome slime. <laughs> He's got a flat head, kind of reminds me of a cobia, almost from overhead. Yeah, I know. Look at the slime just dripping off. When I saw off. pictures, I thought they were a lot more similar, but they are a lot no, different. Oh, very different than yours. Yeah, different cuda, same smell. Yeah, same smell, same slime, unfortunately. The cool thing about Barracuda is they really like a surface lure. In California, we fish iron. And Barracuda generally show up before the yellowtail. So they're a really good warm-up species. It's just a good way to get out on the water, get some surface activity, watch something come up and slam your lure. They're a fun fish to catch. When Ali first introduced me to surface irons, I gotta say I was a little skeptical. I didn't think anything was gonna eat them, but I have become a fan of them. I'm bit. Something small, mackerel. That's a barracuda, look at your bait. What makes you say that? <laughs> I'm not a fish doctor. So it looks like these smaller boils are the berries, the bigger stuff is gonna be the yellows. Watch. Boy, there's a mess of cuda in here. They're hungry. Plenty of barracuda, huh? Now, do they school up? Yeah, huge schools. They move in with the bonita and the yellowtail. They all kind of run together. There's plenty of times here where you're throwing on barracuda and you get a big old yellow too. Oh really? So you can't really take anything for granted, you know? Every Make every boil count? Pretty much. Reel down to the water until it's ripping drag. BDOutdoors.com is your one-stop source for all things fishing, boating, and outdoors. Stay dialed in with current fishing reports, breaking news, and our extensive library of how-to tips. You'll learn about rigging, fish cleaning, boat maintenance. We have recipes for seafood, a game, cutting-edge videos, and gear giveaway contests. It's all free at BDOutdoors.com. Here we go, Rush. Looks like the right stuff. All right. You know, I've mentioned it before and I'll mention it again. Ali is very passionate about fishing. He takes it serious and when he gets out there, he wants to give it his all. There's birds up everywhere. I can't decide where to go. He's got the glasses out. He's looking for birds. He's looking for bird piles. He's looking for signs of life. He's going to get as many casts in in a day as he possibly can. He's a big boy, but he could shimmy down those steps pretty quick. Oh, I can drill a bird. I think I got a cuda. Another cuda? Yeah, these things like me today. My bait's very nervous. There's some blowing up behind us. The bigger boils, oh, popped off, perfect. I'm gonna motor out of this little zone. It's all around us. Look for something bigger. Targeting the three Bs, bass, bonita, barracuda, is pretty much your fishery where you're gonna go bend the rod all day long. You're gonna go chase fish. It's gonna be more of a run and gun type fishery. Big old school of yellowtail, 10 o'clock. Nice size fish. <sighs> Get there. Oh no, they went the other way. That's yellows back there. They just went the other way. Totally juked me. My bait's heading that way. Yeah, yeah, see how the two turns low? Yeah, Wind that in. Underneath. That was a really nice school of bigger fish.
Here they come, they're under us. Get your bait in the water. There they are, right there. Did One o'clock, boiling big. Can I throw it to him or I need to move boat? No, you can throw it to him, easy. Oh, Jesus. Where's my rod? Yeah, you're gonna need, you're gonna need this. <laughs> What the hell? Oh, I cast over you? For the third time in a row. Go. I blew it up. Totally oh. blew it up. You're killing me. Am I clear? Yes. I'm blown up over here. Just grab another rod. Blown up Stay good, too. Me. As everybody's pretty much figured out by now, I'm not the greatest at casting these conventional rods. So I've definitely gotten a lot better, but there's Still times where I'm shooting from the hip and I don't know where it's gonna go. Bit. Jellotail, oh no, dang it. Pointy end bit jellotail. It's a funny looking yellowtail. Uh, well you got your Pacific Barracuda. Do you have two different kinds? Yeah, no, he's got a yellow tail. He does have a yellow tail. Are these slimy? No, not at all. Do they smell? Oh, no, trust me. Anything that eats a surface lure is cool in my book. All right, buddy. One thing that we always talk about in, when we're fishing in the Keys is let's go have a grab bag day. Let's go see how many species we can catch. Let's go try a different way to catch species. It was really cool to show Rush a Southern California grab bag. So much life in here right now, it's tough to tell what's what. Life meaning bait, bonita, barracuda. Sexy mackerel, barracuda, yellowtail. I mean, look every direction, there's birds working, you know. Bit. Good one? Uh, it's not very big, but I don't think it's a barracuda. Might be. Looks like a bonita. Cool. Definitely an albie, or what are they, Ali? Albies or bonitas? Bonita. Fight like a little tuna. Same yeah, ones yeah. we caught at the islands. Awesome, awesome. So here we got what we call, like if you're gonna go out on a party boat or whatever. Right. You're chasing, they say, the three Bs. Bass, Barracuda, and Bonita. Right, and then the trophy fish is Yellowtail. So we got two of the three Bs. We need to get the third. As close as you're gonna get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Guatemala. They're here, man. This has been a 20 year run, buddy. These things haven't left, there's no cycle. When it comes to sail fishing, this is the real deal. The amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. When the Spanish explorers discovered Isla Morada, they called it Purple Isles. Today, they discover such a rich palette of diversions and delicacies, they'd definitely be at a loss for words. Isla Morada in the Florida Keys. Local knowledge is brought to you by Andros Boltworks, adventure never ends. Mustad Hooks, defining fishing hooks since 1877. Aftco, the American fishing tackle company. Costa, see what's out there. And by Casa Vieja Lodge, experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. I have no idea what this is. They're breaking right there. Yeah. Throw that little lure in it. Oh, look at him eating the little, might be mackerel. No, it's Benita. Throw the lure. Look at that ball. Isn't that cool? Hey, that whole. Dude, All this whole area is so alive right now. It's amazing.
Holy crap, it's everywhere. Look at all the bait right in the prop wash. Well, maybe they'll stick to us. Mackerel. You're dipping at them. Oh, man. That's a nice sword bait right there, huh? Dude. Look at that. Is that all mackerel? Holy cow. Wow, that's awesome. Oh. Blue planet. Blue planet. They don't do so well with these three treble hooks. Let's, uh, I'm gonna get a sabiki, cut something off, or grab another rod. Let's pick up a few dozen of these. That place was going off. I mean, everywhere I looked, I was in awe. There's bird piles everywhere, fish blowing up everywhere. Everything was up on the surface and everything was alive. At one point, we just stopped fishing and watched the show. That is sick. Bass is another one of our real staple fish, and honestly, it's the backbone of our party boat system. They really are the day in, day out fish that you learn and you cut your teeth on, and I mean, you hold a fondness for them as you get older. All right, so we're gonna do something different here than we've really, we've really never done this before. This is almost like your traditional half day boat fishing. We're gonna anchor up here, which we got the anchor down. We're backed over the kelp right now. The kelp's down real low, so we can kind of sit over it a little bit. Then we're just gonna start a chum line, kind of like you do at home. And let's see what shows up. We got really good current. The kelp's laying down towards the point, which is what we want. So we're gonna throw some anchovy, put a chum bucket in. And like I said, hopefully we'll have calicos blowing up behind the boat and all that. We always talk about building life. That's how we get things going here in the Keys. Ali thought it would be a great idea. Set up on the kelp beds, put the chum block out and see what we could bring up. I do not know what this is, but it's grande. Grande. I like grande. Look at that. Grumpy calico. Wow, look at the size of that one. That's a lot bigger than the ones we were catching the last time. That's what we're looking for, buddy. Wow. That is, looks like a grouper. That's closest thing that we have to a grouper for sure. Now, when you get on them, will they be the same grade of fish? Or? No, you could have half pound, just like grouper fishing. Half pounders know. and five pounders all mixed in. And this is, I mean, this is a nice one, but it's not even three pounds. Right. You know, five pounder, you're not doing anything. 10's the number. Old fish. Illegal fish is, is 14 inches now. It's like eight or nine years old. That's why nobody wants to kill them. And it's like, a lot of people, like the, the guys, you know, there's so many guys that are passionate about just fishing these fish, you know? Everything came together. We developed the life under the boat. Bait started to show up. We couldn't even get a bait in the water because the mackerel were so thick. Started fishing a bigger sardine, and next thing you knew, we were catching some really nice sized calico bass. Another bass. These are good grade, man. Not huge, but. We're this close to the beaks, right? Yeah, I mean. It doesn't matter. Right out front, you know? The third B. Got all three Bs. It took a little while, just like everything else. But as we kept fishing and chumming, we built life. And the calico bass bite turned out to be pretty decent. Call that a big knack? Oh, man. Super size. Maybe not. No, this feels like a bass. A bass. Oh, my Look god. Look at that one. Watch out. Woo! That was on the surface. Remember I said we should fly line one? Yeah. What do you tell your clients that come on your boat? Listen to your captain? That, that is a real quality, quality nice. bass. That was on a big sardine on the surface. Big sardine on the surface. All this commotion, seriously, put one back. Those are way bigger than the ones we were catching that one day. I mean, that that's a stud. That's four pound or four and a half. It's nothing to catch 10 of these in a day. Yeah. 12 of them, yeah. Come out here. You know what, man? Sun's going down. I'd say we had a pretty good day. Awesome, man. How many different species did we catch? Got the three Bs. Got the bass, barracuda, bonita, Yellow yellowtail, down. two or three mackerel. Some nice mackerel. Yeah, oh man, that one you got, seriously, that like, I would have bounded that. Uh, these are cool, these are really cool, but 
I mean, you saw, that's the best we have in June. You caught a little bit of everything, you know? We didn't kill any one thing. We saw a lot of yellowtail that wouldn't want to bite, unfortunately. But, uh, wow, we made a good day of it. And not far from the dock. So what more could you ask for? Say so we head for the hills, man. It's been a great go. day so far. Let me get out of your way. Yeah, yeah. Awesome day, man. I really appreciate it. No, I'm glad you finally got to see what we have to offer.